That screen you're looking at will eventually be able to show your CPU temperatures and load. Yes, you heard that right. But this is an update we can expect from LTC in the next 30 days or so. We've never seen this before on a keyboard. The LTC Nimbleback NB1041 Pro is a tri-mode keyboard with wired Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz connectivity. This features a steel knob for switching its screen features and dialing in volume. Though it's not gasket mounted, it's got a white steel plate and I still dig its stock sound which we will go over later on. But first, out of its box, you get its manual, cable, switch, puller, and extra Huano red switches. Those are aside from the keyboard, right? You get the keyboard in the box. Weighing at 1.5 kilograms, this tank of a keyboard is heavy as now, are there metal plates inside? No, there aren't. Yet, dampeners are made of silicone, which is way more dense than foam, adding to its overall weight. Plus, its upper case and bottom case is made of thick ABS. And you know, this can take a very good beating. This keyboard does not creak, and so far, the teardown was pretty easy to do. You're free to skip to that part if that's what you're after. I added timestamps below. Uh, that was very difficult to do, so a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Or, of course, a sub so you're updated with new releases such as this. Under the keyboard, you get two kick-up feet and these cable canals for routing and tucking your cable in. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that there is a magnet down there for its dongle. So far, I don't see any rooms for improvement regarding its outer shell. Keycaps are made of PBT which is more resistant to shining versus ABS. They are not shine through keycaps though so lead heads out there, watch out. So far, I really like the color profile of the black variant. LTC offers another variant which is kinda, I would say is perfect for Gundam inspired PC builds. I believe a color profile that's untapped is Naruto, black and orange. Actually, LTC's logo already has that specific black and orange so if you could put that on your keyboards, Quick tip right there, LTC. I believe its keycaps are in SA profile, yet these profiles are way similar with others, so I get confused at times, but they pretty much look like SA to me. I'm totally going to harvest these keycaps, bro, th they're mine. Now for the switches and stabs, I hope the switches from Huano were factory lubed, as they feel a bit scratchy for me, but definitely not as scratchy as our Temu switches. Bro, those suck. Typing on lots of ultralight switches with less than 40 grams of required actuation force, the Huano does feel heavy for my finger. On the upside, you make less mistakes when typing, which annoys me on light switches. The plate-mounted stabilizers, on the other hand, are very well greased and are decently tuned, so I would not add more lube here as it's already full of it. I'm unsure of the brand of the stabs they used here, but all good. Now for the LED, this comes with 18 RGB modes and about 10 static colors. More on that in the softer overview segment of this video. Opening the top shell is pretty straightforward. Just pry the clips on top and the clips on the bottom. There are no clips to pry off on the sides though, so all good there. Do not just pull off the top case. Here's what you do. Gently pull on the case while pushing the screen down to detach it from the upper case. Let's move on. Its plate and PCB are attached to the bottom case with only two screws. Once out, be mindful of another cable connected to the daughter board. I like that this PCB is connected to the daughter board with only one cable versus other keyboards with multiple cables to remove from the PCB. The PCB is not screwed into the plate, so just remove the switches if you want them separated. Now for the internals and its PCB, it's got a 5-pin universal hot swap socket with south-facing RGB. One room for improvement with the PCB is the addition of screw-in holes for screw-in staff. Other than that, mm, I wouldn't change anything else. Moving on, this has a 3000 mAh battery capacity which I think is enough, yet I believe this would benefit from more battery capacity. Some keyboards boast up to 5000 mAh batteries but I believe LTC did this to bring the price to a much more competitive level. Onto its dampening materials, you get silicone as the plate dampener with an embedded switch pad. They're basically melded together. I've never seen this before. At the bottom of the case, you also get silicone. That custom cut silicone is looking sexy and by the way, that's not cheap. To have silicone processed into this shape specifically for this keyboard case is a huge plus for me versus just having foam stuffed in there. I like my keyboards fully dampened so sometimes I would add more case fittings into my keyboards but for the NB1041 Pro, I'm not gonna do anything like that anymore. Moving on to its default screen, this would show the OS, connection mode, and dumb lock. The time and date is also shown there. There's also a battery icon there by the way so that's a good touch. To check battery levels though, you may also press function key and backspace and the F keys will light up depending on your bat. Blah. 
depending on your battery levels. Before we dive into the software, it's very important to note that an updated software is scheduled to roll out in May for the screen to be able to show CPU temperatures and load. But for now, check this out. So what I'm showing you right now is its web-based software. So download this based on your specific OS. Make sure to run it as administrator. Right now, it's all good. Let me finish that one up. IoT driver, allow that one. Okay, let me do a refresh. Let's see what this would look like together. All right, so far, it's exactly like the one that they're showing in their shopping page. Right off the bat, in the main tab right here, you can change when you want the lights to turn off and when you want this to sleep in both 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth mode. Let me just mention that you can change the layers. So that's layer one, here's layer two. When we go over the function settings here, you can change how the function keys work. Anyways, moving on to the macros, I tried recording a macro here. Basically, it's complete. I have nothing else to change here. If I were to modify a delay, just click on a certain delay and click modify. There you go. One of the other upsides to this software is that you can add in mouse clicks. So say I start recording here, I right click on this area. You would notice that it adds my clicks right there. Very, very good. This is what I'm always looking for when it comes to software. So let me stop that. Next, you can customize the screen here and create your own GIF. Now, say for example, the first frame I want is this one. Next frame I want, I'm just gonna click, put a check right there. Next frame, I put an X. Next frame, I put a smiley face. And then you can set the frame delay here. Upload animation. Now let's go over to light. You can choose whether you want this in a static color. You can choose the colors down here. So there's more than eight colors. I thought there were only eight colors. Got any questions? Comment down below and I'll be sure to answer them when I can. It's Bibi Arnera. Subscribe.